there's a couple of updates on the direction that we want to make for uh, SharePoint Framework and uh, the extensibility platform for Microsoft 365, SharePoint Online, Viva, Microsoft Teams, and uh, Microsoft Meta uh, Outlook and Office applications. So SharePoint Framework has a recap is a framework that you can use in order to build the solutions and capabilities for multiple Microsoft 365 canvases. We started with SharePoint with web parts and extensions and full page applications and app pages. Then we enable the functionalities and capabilities of SharePoint framework in Microsoft Teams from which you can use SharePoint framework to build personal apps, Teams tab, meeting apps and messaging extensions with Viva uh, connections and Viva topic uh, that which are based on uh, SharePoint as a backbone infrastructure. You can use SharePoint framework to build extensibility pages for topics or um, cards for Microsoft uh, Viva connections uh, dashboard in the home experience. And then the more that we are progressing and the more that we are moving to a way to have uh, uh, other canvases being part of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, you will see that you can start using Microsoft uh, SharePoint Framework to build solution for Outlook and Office applications. And we'll talk about that actually in a little bit as part of 1.17, new functionalities and capabilities. The, in terms of Viva Connections, if you have not seen Viva Connections, Viva Connections is the new kid that gives you the ability to provide functionalities and capabilities for people that want to bring uh, their functionalities where they work, they want to be able to access on the get go a specific on the get go a specific uh, capability without needing to go and finding these solutions everywhere in their environment. Uh, we have this concept, which is the dashboard. The dashboard contains cards. The cards are the tools that the employees and users can use in order to accomplish their goals during their day by day job. Uh, recently, we launched what is called the Connections Home Experience, which is the one you can see on the left, where you can have a more immersive and targeted dashboard and feed and resources experience without needing to build your home site and creating your page and adding all your web part there. Connections lives both in Teams Rich Client, Teams Mobile, and the web where basically you can build your solutions and cards using SharePoint framework, and those cards will seamlessly work across all of these devices and all of these environments without needing for the developers to be able to make any kind of a strange arrangement uh, so that their solution can basically work everywhere with no problems whatsoever. In terms of 117 and what we're going to have in 117, Alex, do you want to talk about this one? Sure, I can do that. Uh, so today we released release candidate, uh, and uh, hopefully we will be uh, releasing GA version in the next couple of weeks. So what uh, are the changes in there? We now support pop up uh, flow for the token acquisition in uh, browsers. Uh, we bumped the version of Teams GS SDK to two nine one, which is the latest one for Teams GS. Uh, web part of ex actions uh, now go GA. Uh, we also bumped uh, Teams manifest to 116 when you click on sync to Teams or add to Teams in the modern experience. So uh, after that, your app will be automatically, if you have personal apps uh, enabled, it will be uh, automatically available not only in Teams, but also in uh, Microsoft 365 app in Outlook as well. Uh, we bumped the version of uh, Adaptive Cards uh, schema to 1.5. It means that now you can use, for example, tables in your quick views in ACES. Uh, we now support additional file types in media actions for Viva Ace cards. Uh, we added on before action handler for ACES, and uh, I'll show it to you during the uh, demo. Next one is ability to specify initial focus elements in ACES quick views. This is for uh, accessibility purposes. Basically, you can define what element should be focused first for the screen readers. And uh, one more thing, uh, it's especially valuable probably for uh, developers who work on different SharePoint solutions. Now you can have SPFX serve tenant domain OS variable. And uh, when debugging in serve the JSON file, you will have a placeholder that will be automatically replaced with these OS variables. And uh, now I'll probably just uh, jump to the demos to show some of these uh, changes. Take it over.
Awesome. First, let's start with V291 for Teams.js. So, for example, Teams.js has new live share SDK available starting uh, with version 2.5. Before this release, we were on 2.4, so it was unavailable. But now, as you can see, if you go to our context, SDK Microsoft Teams, Teams.js, you see this live share host, which is basically the new API that was added in the bump of the uh, Teams.js. Next one that I mentioned about the OS variable, now in the server.json configuration scaffolded by the human generator, you have this tenant domain placeholder. And uh, if you have this SPFX tenant URL serve, sorry, don't remember correctly the uh, name, it is in the uh, documentation. But basically, if you have this OS variable, it will be automatically uh, replaced. So if you're working on different solutions, but all of these solutions you're testing on the same tenant and same site URL, basically, you can just put it in OS variable and uh, Gulp serve will automatically serve the needed tenant for you. Next one. Top actions, as mentioned, they're going GA, and with that, we also changed a little bit the uh, types for the top actions. In uh, previous versions, we had uh, top actions types kind of proxied from property pane, and it was a little bit confusing because some properties were not working, others were working, but not like you were expecting them. Uh, now, all the types like ITOP actions, top actions, field type, et cetera, et cetera, all of them are specified in a separate uh, module that you can separately install if, you're, uh, if you want to use top actions. And uh, same as it was uh, before, in the uh, web part, you can override this get top actions configuration to basically in the same way as for property pane to provide additional top actions uh, in edit mode. And just to remind you what are the top actions, uh, let me go back to edit mode. So here is my web part, I'm in edit mode. So this button and this drop down are basically top actions that you can add uh, to your web part, which is kind of uh, more clean uh, UI for the authors of your page than the property page. Next one, jump into uh, sync to teams. So if you don't uh, remember or have never done that, so you can go to the uh, tenant app catalog in SharePoint. And when you select specific SharePoint framework solution, uh, you have this button add to teams that basically provisions uh, your SharePoint framework application to teams app catalog. If, of course, you're supporting teams uh, scenarios and how to support team scenarios, if you go to uh, web part manifest, we have, we have supported hosting here. And Teams personal app and Teams tab are basically showing that uh, you want your web part to be, to be available as a tab in your Teams and also as a Teams personal app. And with the update to the uh, manifest of the uh, version of the manifest for Teams, now when you click add to Teams and if you have your web part available as a personal app, in that case, your app will be automatically available in Teams. But also, if you look at that, it also works in Teams, Outlook, and Microsoft 365 app. So basically, now you don't need to do your own custom uh, manifest, uh, package it as a zip file, and upload it separately. Now we are doing everything for you by just clicking Add uh, to Teams. Next one, going to changes for ACES. So one thing to mention is uh, this on before action and here it's it's of course a dummy code but basically uh, this handler will be fired before any action in uh, adaptive cart extension and action is like uh, button click, action submit, for example, or opening a click view, opening external links, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you can check what action type is there. Uh, you have additional configurations like ID of the quick view or uh, additional data for action.submit action. And for example, you can uh, log this information in your external telemetry service or something like that. One remark here, this 
handler is not intended to change the flow of the things. So basically, if you want to try and change like, hey, it's an open quick view event, let me do something and replace the quick view. No, it's not working like that. Don't do that. Most probably you will just break the application. This is mostly for you to track things, to potentially log something additionally, maybe a little bit change uh, the internal state of the uh, ACE, but not like changing the flow of it. Uh, second thing, uh, focus parameters in the view view. It's an additional property in the quick view class. Uh, so what you can provide, you can provide I focus parameters uh, value in there, which has only two properties. One is focus target, which is ID of the DOM element and basically ID of the adaptive card element in your quick view and uh, every life attribute that basically will be set to this specific uh, element for the screen reader to correctly read the information in the element. Another thing to mention is adaptive card schema v1.5 support and here for example I have new element table with three columns and uh, one row with with uh, some information in there and uh, if I go back to my demo I have a workbench with my uh, carton here and in the quick view I have this table rendered so basically now you can use it as well. And that's all I have from demo perspective. And I'll go back to Luca with some additional cool things. Yep, that was awesome. Thank you very much for doing that. Now, so what are we very brief because we have other people waiting for other fantastic demos. Uh, things after 1.17. Uh, one of the big things that we are working on is the ability for people that already invested on Microsoft 365 and Teams uh, bot to be able to reuse these investments and have their bots building uh, adaptive card extensions for Viva Connection dashboard, both uh, quick views and card views. Uh, we want to move the cache APIs to general availability. We are working very, very hard to have a great notification service capability in Viva Connections. More of that uh, later during the semester. Uh, we want to have the better support for home site in Viva Connections Mobile and have the ability to have your home site surfacing in mobile as well. Uh, we are working to build and bring a new card the templates uh, for uh, in Viva Connections. One of the first one that we are working is the ability for you to build a card view that will give you the opportunity to provide search capability and experiences to end users. Hopefully we will be able to give you a brief demo for this very soon. And then we also, another thing we want to work on is give the ability for have a card designer also include the API calls in a secure fashion. And then last slide is very, very uh, further that we also want to have additional functionalities in Viva Connection, just like multiple instance or having tablet support, which is already rolled out for some of the capabilities, at least in iOS operating systems. Uh, we want to have more dashboard personalization improvements. You've already seen that with Viva Home Connections, you can now do inline editing. We want to move even more there and having more uh, editing and dashboard personalization capabilities. We are working on the development jail feature so that you can say that you want to define one of your geos, which will be a virtual geo or a real geo, uh, in your tenancy and basically dedicate that geo for development purposes so that the geo can have different permissions than the rest of your other geos and the rest of your other solutions in the tenancy. Uh, we want to do audit on ungoverned script so that we want to be able to tell you where you have enabled or disabled no script in the site collection list in the tenant admin experience. And then uh, we other related technologies. Uh, we are introducing support for vanity domains in Microsoft Graph API. This feature is rolling so that very soon you will be able to understand if you have vanity domains in the SharePoint online, which these URLs are in Microsoft Graph. Uh, we want to have Microsoft Graph APIs of SharePoint pages and other functionalities around the Viva Feed and Newslinks API. 